Breaking news. Nikon is revealing some of their plans with the RED merger. So we'll see when that first camera is coming and whether it's more of a partnership or an acquisition. We have new cameras leaked from Canon, Sony, and Fuji. We have a new Nikon lens leaked and Adobe integrates artificial intelligence video generation into their video editing apps. So that now anybody can have special effects and any of you shooting stock video, you might be out of work soon. I'll tell you all about it, but first I wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace.com slash Tony is where you start when you want a presence on the web. Whether you have a project, a business, a portfolio, a reel, whatever sparks your imagination deserves its own domain name. Like I have northropphotography.com. Start at squarespace.com slash Tony, register a domain, set up a store, take appointments from clients, track your leads, whatever you can imagine. Squarespace makes it all easy. The trial is completely free. And if you love it, the coupon code Tony will save you 10%. Thank you, Squarespace. Our top story I wanna talk about little bits of information revealed from various interviews about the Nikon and RED acquisition. Interviewers also asked Nikon when we could expect to see the first cameras that sort of melded together RED and Nikon technology, and they said it would take a couple of years. And both these things are kind of what we guess because it takes a little while to develop a camera, even if it's something simple like integrating a particular RAW codec. That, that's going to take a while. And these camera companies typically start planning cameras about five years out, but at least three years out. So even two years would be kind of a rush considering their typical engineering cycle. And whatever it is, we're excited to see it. And be sure to subscribe so that we can bring you more information and reviews when those cameras are available. Now I want to show you something so cool, so mind-blowing. It's going to change the entire world of filmmaking, YouTube, anything, video. And it is generative AI video. And things like Sora have existed for a little bit now, where you can do text to image generation. You can imagine a prompt, type it into a computer, and after some generation, AI returns a pretty passable piece of video. But that's not necessarily usable in the real world because video editors and producers like myself, we have a workflow and whatever it is needs to fit into that workflow. Well, Adobe is integrating generative AI into Premiere Pro and it's not ready yet, but they did want to show us how the technology is working and the fact that they are developing it. And this is some of what they showed. And as you can see, it has pretty amazing potential. First of all, just in a simple way, you will be able to extend a video clip. I don't know how many times I've gotten B-roll of somebody taking a picture or of a camera and I had five seconds of B-roll but I needed 10 or 20 seconds in order to cover the voiceover. Premiere Pro's generative AI will allow you to extend clips so that you can have coverage. That is such a lifesaver. And it means for people like me who just overshoot all the time to make sure I have coverage for everything, I won't have to overshoot as much. And it could also save your butt, save an entire return trip, a reshoot. I think that's pretty amazing, especially since it's just going to be bundled into Premiere Pro and you don't need a big special effects crew. But they're also building things that today do require a special effects crew. Like you could imagine aliens landing or a person walking down a street at night and it could generate that from scratch. Now they show some pretty amazing examples that look great, but those are probably what we call cherry picked. They are probably the very best examples with all the worst examples being thrown out. And I would guess if you expect results like that in a practical way, it's gonna be at least a year, but maybe two years. But then again, this technology is moving so fast. Another practical example of this is the ability to remove logos or objects or shadows or to add things to scenes. Sort of very selective special effects that again, can prove to be just so practical for people like myself just producing videos for YouTube or for clients or businesses, et cetera. This could really be a game changer. It will bring higher production values to smaller and smaller crews. And somebody like me could write a script and film pieces of it and stitch the rest together with generative AI. And it's gonna allow actual movies and TV shows to be made on much, much lower budgets. The downside is it, it will certainly put some people out of work, but it also eliminates gatekeepers and lowers costs. My take is in the short term, it's a huge win for independent filmmakers. In the long term, I think it's only a matter of time before AI takes over 
the writing and the production, and pretty soon AI can just generate entire TV shows and movies geared towards exactly what the algorithm determines that we want. And to me, that gets to be kind of a scary future. Let's get on to some new camera rumors. Fuji Rumors is telling us that the GFX 100S II announcement is going to be on May 20th. This is going to be a medium format 100 megapixel camera based on the GFX 102, but smaller, lighter, cheaper. Can't wait to see it. Be sure to subscribe and we'll get a review for you as soon as production copies are available. Fuji Rumors also leaked a very close up picture of an X-T50. The X-T double digit series of cameras are pretty close to an entry level camera that focuses on analog style photography. So they have things like an analog shutter speed dial on there. I love Fuji cameras for the experience, though I think it's really tough competing with Canon who just keeps driving the prices and the features further and further down. So we'll see what price it ends up hitting at. Fuji is rumored to give it IBIS, which is sensor stabilization. That's great because some of Fuji's best lenses aren't stabilized. And also the 40 megapixel sensor that we're seeing in cameras like the X-T5, the X-H2, and the famous X-106. Can't wait to see it. MirrorlessRumors.com is saying that we're going to get a Sony ZV-E10 Mark II in two to three months. This is like our favorite budget vlogging camera. It just has amazing features that even this camera I'm filming on, a Canon R3, doesn't have. And Sony is moving really fast in the creator camera segment. So I'm super excited to see that when it gets released. Sony also launched a 247 megapixel sensor. And this is, this is bigger than things like the GFX medium format camera. So it's probably going to be either for commercial use or for like very serious cameras, like the really big, you know, 30, 40, $50,000 phase one and Hasselblad studio cameras, not really even field cameras. So it's, it's very specialized, but anytime there's a new super high megapixel sensor, I'm excited to check it out. And in related news, Canon released a global shutter sensor. This is a 19 megapixel sensor with a true global shutter and it's for sale, but it's not in a camera right now. They have different variants that are black and white or color or specialized without any of the filters on it. So you could buy one and integrate it into a system. Now Canon makes lots of sensors like this for things like security cameras. But I would bet that now that they have a global shutter, we will see it in a camera soon. I was actually disappointed with the readout speed that it didn't seem capable of 120 frames per second at 4K. That means that it would be a little bit behind cameras like the Sony A9 Mark III, and that might be why Canon hasn't released it as a camera yet. Canon is saying it's going to have better high ISO results and better dynamic range, but though they didn't do any direct comparisons and we don't have a way to test it, that does look promising. Maybe they've overcome some of those hurdles, so we'll keep you posted when Canon actually puts that into practice. Speaking of Canon, CanonRumors.com is saying that we're finally going to see an announcement for the long-awaited R5 Mark II and R1. They're two flagship mirrorless cameras capable of sports and wildlife and all that good stuff. That announcement is expected May 21st to May 23rd, so in about a month. And I hope some more details leak because we desperately need some exciting news and this is definitely going to be the news of the year. Finally, Nikon leaked a 35 millimeter F1.2 lens. Now, if this is true and it's not a Photoshop, and I think it is true because I think this is very logical, this is really exciting because I, I love 35 millimeters. I use a 35 F1.4 all the time. Most of the videos we film out of the studio are shot with a 35 F1.4, but you know me, I would shoot at F1.2 if I could. So this might be enough to finally push me to Nikon. That comes via NikonRumors.com. Can't wait for that to be released. In the comments down below, let me know which of these you're actually excited about. And don't forget to check out our sponsor, Squarespace. They make amazing websites, including your own custom domain, really easy to set up, easier than social media. And you get to control everything, the colors, the logo, the branding for a truly professional experience. So head to squarespace.com slash Tony today and set up one for your portfolio, your reel, your business, your personal project, set up multiple different websites. I have several different domains because I'm always juggling some different projects, right? Try it out for free. When you love it, the coupon code Tony gets you 10% off. Thanks for sponsoring a Squarespace. Bye.